Say extraordinary things. Lesbians and gays, why are there hate crimes against them? You know they were going to rape us. They left their husbands for each other. A woman knows what a woman wants. You left your wife. I was having the feelings for the for the men as well. Can they adopt? Child welfare explains. We don't practice any kind of discrimination in terms of adoption. Leon is born to parents. Children are very accepting, far more accepting than adults. lesbians being more readily accepted in our society? Welcome. We have tackled the subject for years now, but have we made any headway? South Africa has one of the most liberal constitutions pertaining to gay and lesbians, but is South African, the South African society, liberal enough? We still read of gays being shunned and we hear of hate crimes against lesbians and gays. Sometimes they even tell us they can't even adopt children. Well, we're going to be answering all those questions today. Recent media reports allege continued claims of attacks on blacks, gays and Jews on some university At campuses. One stage, five guys kicked my door down, pushed me around in the room and tried to hit me. A gay student claims his residence room was vandalized by a group calling themselves the Swart Hunt, or the Black Hand. The Mercury quoted the gay student saying, they wrote on my walls that I must get out of the hostel and rotten food and feces were smeared on my room door. The gay student allegedly quoted that he believed the attack was homophobic because they didn't like his lifestyle. The people, though, are so intimidated by these internal groups inside the residences and uh, fear the backlashes from these elements in residences that they are not willing to come forward. This is just one area where hate crimes against lesbians and gays are perpetrated. I think anybody who doesn't fit in in res is sort of victimised, you know, whether they be sort of gay or black or Jewish or whatever. The debate continues. We are joined by Mary Lowe, who says she was raped while walking home with her lesbian partner, and Nunu Sigasa, who was raped, she says, by a relative and has now contracted HIV. We also are joined by David Ramato, Miss Gay Soweto 2000, who says he is experiencing problems still in the community. But let's talk. Let's talk about it. I was coming from the Gay and Lesbian Pride March in Bramfontein uh, because, uh, you know, we have annually the Gay and Lesbian Pride March. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then from there, we have the after, par the after party, mm -hmm. which was held in the inner, in the, in the center of Bramfontein. It's called uh, the Gay Heartland. Mm -hmm. We tried to get a, mit a meter taxi from there. And unfortunately, due to the fact that it was a Gay Pride March, most of the meter taxis were like very busy that evening. And then from there, the security told us if we walk along Razik Street, we might be able to get a meter taxi. And then when I turned my head, I saw two colored men coming from behind us. And then I said to my partner, I don't, I have a fear that these men are following us. But I said to her, nevertheless, let us just continue walking fast as long as we reach Razik Street, you know. And uh, I know it's a busy street and at least they might not be able to, to get hold of us. But to my surprise, it, was, it only took about three seconds they were behind us. They tapped us on our shoulders and then they, they, they told us if we are going to make noise, they are going to... Uh, they knew you were lesbians. In, in court, they denied. They said they didn't know we were lesbians. But the mere fact that they said they were following us from a gay venue, they mm. didn't just say from a venue, they said mm. from a gay and lesbian venue. Mm. That was an indication that they knew that we were mm. lesbians. They raped both of you. They raped both of us. They removed, uh, uh, removed our uh, valuable possessions from us. That includes jewelry, money. And then I thought, okay, it's all over. The long and short they of it is these men have been sentenced to 15 and 10 years 
Yes, they've increased. been sentenced to 15 years maximum and 10 years minimum. Okay. When and you went to re report uh, the incident, the police supposedly or allegedly said that's what prostitutes get and you said you're not prostitutes. Yeah, it's not them. What happened, we, my partner managed to escape from the scene because she saw a blue siren vehicle that was passing by and then the guy was on top of her. He got up from her and he was moving in the direction of the street because he became suspicious why she constantly lifting her head. Mm -hmm. And with then she decided to get up. She ran naked down the road without her pants and without her panty. There was a petrol attendant at the filling station mm -hmm. where she went and asked for help and told him she was raped. Then he saw a traffic cop that came to the filling station. He stopped him and told him that she's in need of help. She don't know how to find a way to the Hillbrow police station. The traffic cop then told her that she, des she deserves that she's a prostitute. And then she told him she's not a prostitute, she's actually a lesbian. And then he said, even worse, you know, it still makes you people prostitutes. Mm. So that's the thing that people, the societies are still very arrogant and also very, uh, are using a very abusive words when it comes to gays and lesbians. I mean, because the mere fact that she said I'm mm. a lesbian, he said mm. it's even worse, you know. But no, no, your story as well. You say you were raped by a relative who knew you were a lesbian yes. and did it deliberately. Yeah. He keep on doing that you for three years. For three years he raped yes. you and From you say as a result you've contracted HIV. Yes. Have and you gone to a doctor to check it? Yes, after I saw him in mm. 1999 mm. and then it, he told me that his HIV, everything that he was doing, he was doing on papers. So I, I tested and it was like that and I repeatedly again, I found it positive. Mm. I think we still have difficulty accepting the fact that we, the lesbian part, I think the gay part is coming out a little more and people are beginning to come to terms a little bit more with it. So, David, what have you experienced? I mean, you are Miss Soweto, 2000. Yes, um, 1997, um, I was with a partner. We went to one, at a party somewhere in the Midlands, whereby he was shot in the head because of three ladies. They wanted to take those ladies, they refused. Now they decided, the, the three guys decided to take the three ladies and kill both of us, I and, <clears throat> sorry, my partner. Then um, he was shot on the head, I was missed thrice at the back. I was lying on the, on the floor. They missed uh, me and two of the ladies and only my partner died. So you say they were shooting you because they knew you were, you were gay? They knew you were gay and then they decided to take the three ladies, the ladies refused. He said, because of you moving, going out with these two guys who are gay. So we're gonna kill these gay people and take you and rape you. Then they raped only two girls and one uh, escaped. So we still have not come to terms with it in many ways. We still are discriminating, we still are persecuting gay people. Um, but in closing, any message you'd like to give to young people out there who are scared to come out of the closet? Just a quick message. Yeah, what I can say, it's hardly out there, but discrimination is always there, and we're always the victim, but one thing for sure, this thing will end, and they must have that hope and stand up against this hate crime and fight with us. Is it more in the black community? Because I noticed right here, we're sitting with only black people. I'm from a colored community, and the colored community it's, it, to a certain extent, they also engage in a lot of hate crimes mm -hmm. towards gays and lesbians because I'm originally from Nuclear. Mm -hmm. And Nuclear is an area mm -hmm. in Westbury where gays and lesbians are still not accepted 100%, even though they've been visible there mm -hmm. for a decade, but it's still a community where they still refuse to accept gays and lesbians. Ms. Soweto? Yeah, I would say to all the young guys and ladies as well, meaning the lesbian and gays, stop peeping. Get out like as we out. Because some they peep and go back, close their doors. So because be like scared. us. They are scared. It's, it's not I mean, easy. What it's you tell us what you went through, how do you expect them to come, come out of the closet? <laughs> it, was, it was so hard. Mm. Mm. It was so hard. It, it took such a long time, but I had to. Let's talk about it again after the break. Uh, now I'm going to be naughty. I see you, you have the tie on. <laughs> what does that mean? You, you, you're the man in the house. Huh? No, she, she, you're the man. She told me about you before. You're the man. Huh? <laughs> when we return, a man and a woman who left their respective spouses for gay relationships. What made you leave your husband for another woman? 
she understood me. She knows what I want. Are you a recovered male or female gambler who wants to talk about how your addiction affected your family and your life? Are you a present gambler who needs help in escaping your addiction? Call us right now on 011-476-8411 on Felicia, where extraordinary people say extraordinary things. And that's when you... Sex change. Yeah. I am not a girl. Yeah. Woman to man. We cannot the doctors that. explain. Therefore, in this case, we will change the body. Man to woman. Yes, I do. Official documents must change. Legislation takes a very long time. I will ask accept him just like he is. A mother will not change. I'm still loving this much. We are talking about gay and lesbian relations. Are we talking about it more openly now? We hear of it more and more nowadays, men and women who decide to live their straight marriages for a gay and lesbian partner. Zeke's Pala. <laughs> and... Ritumetsi obviously made headlines when they got married. And Teresa Mulder both left their marriages for the newfound love. I see you guys are really in love. Let me see you holding <laughs> hands there. Huh? It's lekker. Let's talk. Huh? Mm -hmm. Tell me about you. <laughs> I was married 15 years. Uh. With my husband, I've got three children. And you first thought of us being best friends. Your husbands were friends as well? Mm hmm Yes. So when your husband came to see each other, as they were playing you know, <laughs> or drinking beers, watching rugby, you guys were hanky-packing in another room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not exactly. <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. When did it start? What ultimately happened? What made you leave your husband for another woman? She understood me. She knows what I want. What do you want? <laughs> a woman knows what a woman wants. What does a woman want? Well, you should tell me. You're also a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're right. I want love. I want comfort. Yes. So that's what you get from you her. You want to be appreciated too. Well, Teresa, you had, there was some abuse as well. Mm. Uh, is verbal abuse. Mm. She had, Teresa had um, physical abuse. You want to talk to us about it, Teresa? <clears throat> well, where it started, that's where it actually started was my husband used to go out at night saying that he works, coming back six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning, um, clothes all messed up. If I should ask him about it, then I get beaten up. Woman used to phone me at work telling me to ask my husband where he was the night before. Then I know he wasn't home. Then I get beaten up. Then I'm just trying to, I'm, I don't want to be digging. Obviously, it is a sensitive story. I want you to volunteer what you want television land out there to know. So I'm, I'm trying here without really embarrassing anybody, I hope. No, it's fine. Mm -hmm. Are you living together right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You plan to get married, you're engaged? Definitely. Yeah. You're engaged? Yes, we are. Mm. My husband got married on your show last year. <laughs> Did he? Yes, yeah. the end show. Your last point. show. <laughs> <laughs> children? What do you have plans for? Do you have children? Oh, I've got two. She's got three, mm. five together. So. And what are the children saying? They accept the yeah. They understand. So, yes, they mm. love her a lot. Mine loves her very much. Mm. I guess children ultimately just want to see their mothers or their fathers happy. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm fighting, bigoting, and some like it anymore. They just How old are the children? Them. My youngest is four, and then my son will be 10 next month. My son's, my other son will be 15, mm. my other son 14, and my daughter will be 12. OK. Sit here and start thinking about some things that you've always wanted to say that you have not been able to talk about whilst I talk to Ritu Mitzi and Zakes here. <laughs> Right, Dumitzi and Zakes. It was a big day here, huh? Zakes leaves wife to marry his new man. The age gap is 20 years, roughly. Mm -hmm. 20, 25. 20? 
20, I'm 24 this year. You 24? This year. Yeah, you 40. And uh, that's chicken murder, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> you left your wife. Yes. To marry <clears throat> to Metsi. Why? I found being a gay. Mm -hmm. But all the, all, all the time I was staying, I was having the business at rural areas. But I was having the feelings for the for the men as well oh, okay. in my marriage. Till I decided to come to Johannesburg. Then I had a business here. Mm -hmm. Then I just decided that on on 2001 I met Ritu Metsi, and then I just decided, ah, let me just live one life. But but what do your parents say? My parents. To my side, my parents are fine. And you? Be honest. Yes, to my side. My parents are my parents are fine, but my father, because he is the one was not allowed. He is the one. On a some part, lochori give a more life in yana because he's a priest. So later on, he decided to to say no ritimacy live your own life because this nowadays people are dying outside, especially gays and lesbians. Mm -hmm. They commit suicide because mm -hmm. of the parents who doesn't want to accept their children mm -hmm. as they are. As far as your parents are concerned, they wanted you to live up to your name, Ritu Metze. We are happy for you. That's what your name means. Huh? Yes. So are they happy for you? We'll talk to them after the break. Okay. When your partner says that they want, that they really badly want a child, it's something you have to listen to. Children are very accepting, far more accepting than adults. The tide is slowly turning, as we've seen in the papers, with the courts ruling that gays and lesbians can now adopt. We're sitting here with two couples who have adopted little Gabriel. Hello. There we are. Give me a, there we are, Toto. You should be an actor, I'm sure. You really should be an actor. And little Temba. Hey, Temba. I like those shoes. Shoes. I just want to quickly go to uh, Dana. And we talked about hate crimes earlier. They still continue. Could you kindly stand up? Yes, Felicia. There's uh, a rising incidence of hate crimes, especially against lesbians in mm -hmm. the townships and urban centers of um, Johannesburg, Houting, I, I think all through South Africa, but we know mostly about what happens in Johannesburg, where women are raped like, like Mary and Nunu, women are beaten. We have reports all the time um, coming through to, to the website at Behind the Mask yeah. uh, about women being beaten, about women being abducted. The, there was one uh, recently who was abducted. She was taken in a kumbi. She was driven all over the place. She was forced to do all kinds of horrible things, even with some vagrant in, in an open lot somewhere. She was intimidated so much that she has had to leave her home right now. She's, she's being transferred to a shelter. Mm. Um, that's, that's how bad it is. And, and what is terrible is that there is very little community support and uh, the the police don't respond very effectively mm. when reports are made. Mary is perhaps the only person in, in over 30 reports that we have received wow. who actually had her matter dealt with by the court, where, where the, the perpetrators were actually imprisoned. Yes, and that deserves applause. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but by and large, the, when the matters are reported, the police don't take it very seriously. They, they either say they, it's deserved because, hey, the lesbians, they want to be men, eh? so they deserve it. Mm. Or they, they're just not diligent. You call about the matter, they say we have more important matters yeah. dealing with, and mm. it's very, very disturbing. Okay. And that is the, that's one of the reasons that we feel it's necessary to have this hate crimes, this anti-hate crimes campaign. That and well, here's another about. forum where we just like to really give exposure to continued discrimination for whatever sector of our society. Thank you very much. Here's a pastor, Nokutula Lala, who says um, being a gay and lesbian is not a sin and people should change their way of thinking about gays and lesbians. 
And what do you say to all? I mean, I, some of the arguments I always read about is God made Adam and Eve. God did not make Adam and Steve. <laughs> I mean. In my belief, I believe that God created human beings. So uh, gays and lesbians are human beings too because they are created in God's image. Mm -hmm. So no one has a right to discriminate, to beat, to, 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 to kill or to rape. A, a other human being because for 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 Hori Mutu they must change. No one has a right to change anybody because God created them the way they are. Okay. So I believe that no one has a right to do that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Well let's talk here to Leon and Michael and Bruna and Nicola. You have decided to adopt children and I'd like you to talk about it. Was it easy? Um, would you encourage others to, and why did you do it? Oh, it was absolutely very easy. Um, the reasons why we did it are just different. I, mean, I have always wanted a child. Um, Michael can say what his reasons were. Gabriel is beating up, I'm not sure, daddy, mummy. We're waiting for him to decide. Oh, okay. I mean, when, when your partner says that they want, that they really badly want a child, it's something you have to listen to. And um, I never really thought of having a child myself, but Leon is, is born to parent. And, um, and so I had to listen very carefully to that. Um, but on the other hand, I think that everybody in the society has, we have to take care of the, of the children in the society. And so that's no, why I did it. In fact, when you said, uh, that about Leon, there is a warmth to you. There is, um, I don't know, tenderness. I saw you with the child earlier behind, before even the camera started rolling. There was this warmth that you seemed to exude towards the child. Another question. Someone would say, well, they should have adopted white kids. Why do they adopt black kids? Black for me has never been an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, when I met him, on the Saturday, I fell in love straight away. It didn't matter what his colour was, what his sex was. I fell in love with Did this child. Did you have the child before you and uh, Michael met? No, 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 no. We met him together on the same day. We've been together for three years before he came along. Okay. And Shireen phoned on the Friday and said, you know, that's your baby. We went along on the Saturday and he took, we took him out for the day. And by the time he was in the car, he was mine. Um, there's no issue about colour, it was just this is my baby and my heart's now taken by two, not one anymore. They do pong pong to pong pong pong. And uh, tell me about uh, Timber. We were a safe house and uh, Timber was the first child that came to us through the safe house. So he's been with us since he was a day old. And. Uh, I knew from the moment he was handed over to us that uh, we were going to adopt him. Bruna took a little bit of convincing, but uh, yeah. Why did you have to get some convincing? <coughs> Being a safe house, I mean, uh, the goal was to look after him until somebody uh, could find, until they could find a foster place for him. So that wasn't in my mind initially. And then as the time grew on, I mean, you, you just fall in love with him. You can't. The, the, hey, nothing. Gabriel, what are you doing here? <laughs> and then it just seemed to be the most natural thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think the children will be asking questions later on? Yes, they will. And it's natural. You'll be fine, I don't think, worry. I think Let you any, run around. Any child would, would ask questions. But if I see the interaction that we've had with our other ch friends' children, Children are very accepting, far more accepting than adults. Um, do your friends ask? I mean, I'm sure you have friends from heterosexual relationships. Do they always ask why, what, how? I must say, I found it surprisingly easy. People have accepted us, they've accepted the baby. Um, maybe we've just been lucky, but, but in our experience, it hasn't been anything extraordinary. I mean, people do do a, a sort of a double take sometimes. Yeah, I'm and try sure. and work out, 
you know, at one point they thought I was Leon's father, not the baby's father. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I think once and people work it out, they, they come to terms with it. I mean, people have got to grow up. And I bet you know? they said, no, they're just taking out the maid's child. Yeah, that, that, we've had, had that a couple of times. Yeah. I've heard that. I've, yeah. I've heard especially, that. Especially if, you, if you're with a friend who's black. Yeah. Then the assumption is that Gabriel is their child. Uh, um, but you get over these things, you know. It's life. Well, I must applaud you. I must applaud you. Chutzpah. Where's Nondo and Tumi? Nomonde and Tumi. Could you kindly stand? And uh, you two are planning to also get married at some point when the law ultimately allows it to happen. Am I right? Yes. Tell me about yourselves quickly. Uh, we've been together for about uh, three years on a very good relationship and a very comfortable one. And uh, it's really frustrating because we really want to get married. For us not to get married, it's kind of like not okay with us. But and you have a different plan when it comes to having a child. Yes, we Tell do. us about it. Uh, actually, we're looking on having um, an insemination. We both agreed on that. But uh, because of the financial situation, we really can't. But we'd love to. It's our dream. And uh, it, will be, it will mean a lot for us to bring a life into this earth to a loving couple and <laughs> a stable relationship that we have. You're not, not thinking of adopting a baby? Not for now. Huh? If we fail, then we will consider that route. Oh. Oh, boy, this is a job keeping you up here. Huh? <laughs> There we are. Well, we can't stress enough how important it is to open your hearts to children needing to be adopted. I did a public service announcement for the Johannesburg Child Welfare recently. Every child needs a home was the theme. Let's just see. Do you support children's rights? Hi, I'm Felicia and I need you to reach out. Our children need your help. They need your love and care. Every child deserves love and care only a family can give. Please call that number on your screen right now and give a child a warm home, as you see here. After the break, we continue to talk about how you can adopt children, because I'm sure you, you said it was a little difficult, wasn't it? Yeah, there's a process. There is a process, so we're going to find out a little bit more about it after the break. There are so many difficulties teenagers these days face just in terms of identity. We, we don't practice any kind of discrimination. Do you want to find out the paternity of your child and need our help? Are you a mother or father who's having difficulty getting the other parent of your child to acknowledge the paternity? We want to help you. Call us right now on 011-476-8411 on Felicia, where extraordinary people say extraordinary things. If you would like to be a member of our studio audience on the 18th of June, we'll be talking about paternity and gambling addiction. For your free tickets, call 011-476-8411, but remember, tickets are limited, so please call soon. Well, we've been speaking to gay couples who have adopted children, but it is not an easy thing for many to do, they say. They say they're still being discriminated against. Is it true, Shireen? We are talking to Shireen Patel, adoption social worker, Johannesburg Child Welfare. Mm, my favorite okay. organization again, huh? <laughs> yes, Felicia. Firstly, Felicia, I just want to thank you so much for all that you have done towards the placement of the large numbers of babies that we have. You have no idea the response we've had to the commercial that you've done for us. It, it's also through this, through these programs that you've done that uh, we've gotten this fantastic donation of 10,000 rands. It was quite interesting. I mean, yeah. I was at the restaurant and this gentleman says, do you know what? I love children. And here is a check. I want to give you a check for 10,000 rand for abundant children. I saw this commercial that you do. And I said, well, sir, give me the money. Put your money where your mouth is. Right, and yeah. he, bang, wrote the check. Yeah. 10,000. Thanks again. I really would like to thank Mr. David Naidu 
we really, really appreciate it. And yes, and I know that Otandweni really deserves this money. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, the children's home in Soweto, mm -hmm. where we have more than 40 children uh, waiting to be adopted. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, just to get back to the issue of adoption, um, look, according to the Bill of Rights, we, you know, I mean, everybody has a right to adopt. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, where Johannesburg Child Welfare Society is concerned, uh, we, ha we, we don't practice any kind of discrimination in terms of adoption. Um, I think that our point of view is that we have got so many children that need homes. Mm -hmm. Many people say the red tape is just unbelievable. They say it takes forever to adopt a child. If it's, for instance, Indian families or white families that are wanting to adopt, yes, there is a big waiting list. They, they They'd have white. to wait for years. But people like Michael and Leon, who didn't, who, or for that matter, even Bruno and, and, and um, Nicola, who, who came with no real sort of um, requirements or yeah. criteria, mm -hmm. they were happy to adopt a child. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, in those instances, it, it, it goes pretty, you know, quickly. The process itself involves interviews. We, we have to screen people. We have to be sure that they are the right people, mm -hmm. that they are able to give a child a loving home, that they, you know, that they are in a position to care for a child. Mm -hmm. So that is absolutely necessary. I mean, we, we have to do what is in the best interest of the child. That is true. Then we're also going to talk to Debbie Elliott. She's a clinical psychologist. I think more importantly, I want to talk here about young people coming out. How easy is it? Psychologically, what does it do to them? Felicia, I think despite all the social impacts of coming out, psychologically, possibly the fear of rejection, abandonment, um, lack of acceptance seems to be particularly difficult and if we think of time periods in adolescence there are so many difficulties teenagers these days face just in terms of identity mm -hmm. that to then come out with further gender issues seems to be a particularly difficult thing to do young adults also come out at a time where there's a big struggle between dependence and independence mm -hmm. shifting from dependence of parents to dependence on peers so seeking acceptance in so many different spheres and often fearing that that might not be given mm -hmm. so a big fear of rejection and abandonment is often seen when people do come out in fact uh, wendy <coughs> uh, raised a serious issue during the break we're talking about is television also the right place to come out and apparently not uh, you want to just raise your concerns as well about coming out the most important thing that one considers um, in the coming out process because obviously you're coming out from one you're coming out <laughs> as a lesbian or a gay person and you're coming into something as mm -hmm. well you come into you come into another community mm -hmm. now my very serious concern and why i am absolutely adamant that it should be to be insensitive, to encourage, even encourage people to come out on national television for the first time uh, to their parents, is simply because as a, as a black community in this country, we are faced, we're faced with many difficulties. We have the constitution, but also socioeconomic, our socioeconomic situation or circumstances as such that we do not have the luxury to say, I'm coming out, my parents and I will go to a psychologist, we mm. will have counseling, mm. because we, can, we can't afford that. I mean, there's a joke that goes around, well, uh, black people don't go to therapists, they go to church, mm. do you understand? But you go to church and you get kicked out of church because you are a lesbian. Mm. You walk out of church, you try to go home, your parents don't understand it because mm. they look at you and they see a girl, and what do your parents want? They want cows. Mm. They want you to get married to some man. Mm -hmm. You don't do that, you, you kicked out of home. Exactly, mm. exactly, you get kicked out of home. In addition to that, you go to school, the teachers don't understand. You know, and, and you, you, have no, you have no support system. And, mm -hmm. and, and for me, I would never, I mean, p kids want to come out at a young age. Some, some of them want to come out at 13, 14, 15. And um, what, I say, what I say to kids at that age is, the most important thing for you right now is to get an education. Mm -hmm. Go to school, focus, focus mm -hmm. on that. Mm -hmm. Your sexual orientation is part of you. I'm, I'm not asking you to put it away, but I'm just saying that focus on that one other thing that at least will enable you to be secure financially so that you can, you can have self-reliance. Mm. That's so important. Thanks, Thank you.
I'm going to get into the adoption one as well, but while we're still on this coming out issue, let me talk to Ritu Metsu's parents. When your son came to you and said, Mom, guess what? I'm getting married to another man. How did you feel? I didn't know Okay. Well, the long and short of it is the mother says they would rather have him come out the way he did rather than commit suicide because he was already threatening that if they did not allow him to do it. So I guess you figure out do you want to lose your child or do you want to just uh, have him live his life? And his name is Ritumit. Are you okay, Ritumit? Why are you crying, sweetie? Why are you crying, mate? Why are you crying? Are you okay? Why are you crying? Give me that mic. I think Ritumit wants to talk to us. You want to talk to me? King Susan. Well, you're fine. You're fine? Yes. Mm. All righty. After the break, what are the legal rights of lesbians and gays? to prepare that child um, with being questioned, asked to justify him or herself. And that's when you... Sex change. Yeah. I am not a girl. Yeah. Woman to man. We cannot the doctors that. explain. Therefore, in this case, we will change the body. Man to woman. Yes, I do. Official I documents must change. Legislation takes a very long time. I will accept them just... Like a mother oh, will not father. change. You go. I'm still loving it's my child. Mm -hmm. We are talking about gays and lesbians, or the gay and lesbian community, but Wendy's taking issue with this. During the break, he was a little upset about it. Your sexual identity is such a personal and private thing mm -hmm. that you don't go on television and say, hello, I'm gay. It's, 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 I, I, I mean, I, mean I, I understand you, maybe no, no, your objectives, but I think that, mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I don't think that it's fair or reasonable mm -hmm. on, on the person who's coming out or on the parents who have to deal mm -hmm. with it for the first time. That's, you know, that's why I'm asking the question right here, especially if you hear, no, you don't have to get angry now, sweetie. Uh -uh, we, it's all about communication. Yes, I know. All right. Michael, you raised the question to Shireen. I just wanted to make the point that I think lesbians have led the way, uh, certainly in this country, in terms of adoption and in terms of providing children with homes. Often it's their own children, um, but uh, it's becoming more increasingly the case that adoptions have... Uh, uh, have happened, uh, you know, with lesbian, with lesbian couples. But I think with gay men, it's almost like it's not on the radar screen. Mm. People don't even think about it as being an option. Um, and the society generally doesn't think of it as, as an option. And I think we're here to say it is an option, it's a very good option, it's a very ordinary option. And it's the kind of thing that more gay people should be doing, gay men should be doing. Mm. Davi? The reality of it is that we live in a world that the norm is heterosexuality and another norm is that you have a biological mother and father. And I think um, sending out a child into a world with those type of norms, you have to prepare that child um, with being questioned, asked to justify him or herself and to equip the child with the skills um, to do that. 
if you think that the child would not have those skills, I think one should reconsider how open one is mm -hmm. about being a gay and lesbian parent. Mm. Uh, I just want to talk about the recognition of the same-sex marriages because I firmly believe that it's one of the itching issues that we have dealt with in this uh, show. Uh, firstly, we, the, the problem that we are facing with the recognition of the same-sex marriages uh, relates to the definition of marriage uh, in terms of common law, which defines marriage as a voluntary union between one man and a woman, and one woman. Then I think uh, the South African Law Reform Commission have done a tremendous work towards that in terms of uh, reviewing the Marriage Act. And uh, as Equality Project, we're taking the case now to the, I mean, to the court uh, before the end of May. And we sincerely hope that we will pass that hurdle and everyone will get married. Mm. <laughs> All right, let's get some more questions to Shireen and Debbie here. Shireen, you know, I've dealt with, uh, with a couple of, I think there must be about four or five, five clients or couples who wanted to adopt children. Four of them were, were gay men, <coughs> white gay men. They'd approached Johannesburg Child Welfare Society to assist them with the process of adoption. They had been interviewed by social workers. They'd been waiting for five years to get a child. Now, my question to them was, well, what's the difficulty? I mean, the, the co-parent adoption decision was handed down last day in October by the Constitutional Court. And with that, we, we believed, I mean, we knew, we knew the Constitutional Court is on our side. An adoption agency cannot have policies or procedures which are discriminating, um, which are discriminatory on the basis of sexual orientation. So, in short, you're saying that there's more discrimination when it comes to gay men adopting children. There's sort of experience gay couples, on, uh, I should say. In, in my office, that is what I'm okay. experienced. Yes. Well, firstly, to answer your question, um, I said, as I said earlier, we do not <laughs> practice discrimination in terms of. You know, and, and our policy is very specific in that regard. You know, when it comes to choosing parents for children, um, I'm not sure why your clients, you know, had the problems that they did have, but I do know that um, when people approach us, I mean, everyone, regardless of whether they are a gay couple or a straight couple or a single parent, they Questions have to go asked. through a screening process. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is necessary in any, as I said, with any couple, because we have to be sure that, you know, those people are going to be in a position to provide a good home for the child. So I, mm. I'm not sure Did you guys go through happened. a lot of screening as well? I'm, I'm sure everybody, everybody would go through screening. There's a children are classed. I don't know if Journalist with Child Welfare does it as well, but I know that there are a lot of adoption agencies out there who class children in terms of, in terms of race, HIV, other illnesses, and uh, whatever, white, black, whatever, whatever the case may be, gender. And what we found is that with, and, and I'm only speaking of what, of what I know, so this stuff to the best of my knowledge, right? Now, what we found is that lesbian and gay couples are given children who fall into that sort of, and I can't speak for you guys, clearly, well, we, we sort of fall in that category of the last category, if I, can, if I may put it that way. Okay. Now, this, this is information which I get from my clients, which mm -hmm. I get in the office. I did see That's the a, letter. Yeah. I did see, see yeah. that letter. So it's really saying something that was also facts to us. But I don't know. How, how do you class children that age? All children are beautiful if you really love children. I... Can I just say something here? <laughs> now, what, it ha what happens is that... Also, when it comes to the babies, we have birth mothers who, will, uh, who, 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 when they come and give their babies a f up for adoption, will actually say, or, you know, that they would like their child to be adopted, say, by a conventional, uh, well, by a couple, and then they, you know, they would choose, like, you know, whether they okay with a couple, whether they're okay with a, with a, with a single person of the same race, and, and so it goes. The children that you are talking about, that you know, if you call at the end of the barrel, the, the barrel mm -hmm. uh, that's absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you would, if you check with the people who have adopted here, Leanne and Michael, it, it just wasn't, it's not true. Mm -hmm. You know, they, were, they, were, they got very young babies, in fact. 
the babies are not sick or ill or HIV positive. Last comment from you. I think it's just really important to remember that all children face difficulties irrespective of how they're brought up. Um, I see a lot of children with different difficulties so just to encourage the parents that have adopted there's a lot that can go right you know and just to really encourage you and support you in that I think mm. would be very important too. Thanks. Well Shireen last appeal again to people to please come forward and adopt children. I'm forever begging. <laughs> no, we have to beg because we want to give these children a yes. home. Well, like I said earlier, yes, we do have so many children and um, we're desperately needing adoptive parents. It's a problem not just at Johannesburg Child Welfare, but countrywide. That's right. And for anyone that's interested, if they're living outside of Johannesburg, they could contact the agencies in the area. Mm -hmm. But uh, for those living in Johannesburg, you know, they could approach us and we did certainly try to help them. Mm -hmm. Thanks a million. The lesbian and gay communities say they are still struggling against the animosity of hate crimes in our society. We call for tolerance, South Africa. No matter one's sexual preference, above all, we are all human beings and deserve to be treated with the same respect we want from others. Until next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Here are some of the letters we have received recently. Brenda wrote to say, Your show has taught us never to look at a person and see colour, creed or gender. It has taught us to continue to see the value of Ubuntu, care for the underprivileged. Natasha wrote in to say, I appreciate the way you treat everyone as equals, white, black, able and disabled, young and old. Your show in which you reunited adopted children with their biological parents was touching. I couldn't stop crying. Jocelyn wrote to say, I watched your show on child abuse with tears in my eyes. I too am a victim and can no longer suffer in silence. It has been too hard and too difficult. I need to break the silence and speak out. <laughs>